Welcome to the Flyway Youth Forum. I think we've got quite a few participants in the room already, and we are live on YouTube. So we're very excited to be starting off this Flyway Youth Forum of the East Atlantic Flyway together with you. Um, just double check, we have everybody in the room. And without further ado, we'll start this amazing journey together along the East Atlantic Flyway. So good morning too. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I think we have people from all around the world um, in, in this virtual room and our, across our audience on YouTube. Um, we are extremely excited to be here with you today on this very first day of the East Atlantic Flyway Youth Forum. We are all here today connected through the path taken by millions of migratory water birds every year. From the Arctic to South, Afri South Africa and back, these birds travel across the East Atlantic coast, stopping to rest, feed and breed in wetlands all along the way. Whether you know a lot about wetlands or migratory water birds, or you're simply curious about it, well, this is the, very, this is the place for you. And if you're in keen to meet other young people from across the, fly, the flyway, then welcome to the Flyway Youth Forum. This is, this is a, the platform for you. We hope that the next weeks together, you'll get to know each other better, connect to each other's stories, and together team up to protect the flyways, wetlands, and migratory water birds. The forum is your space to discuss flyway topics that are important to you and to have your voices heard. This year, we are particularly grateful to count on the support of ICI de Paris, volunteering their time to provide this forum in French and English through live interpretation. Please click on the interpretation option at the bottom of your Zoom screen and select the language channel of your choice, and you will either hear Arnaud or Irene on the other side. So together, let's take off for nature from Africa to the Arctic. Welcome to the 2021 East Atlantic Flyway Youth Forum. What I'm gonna do today is uh, at this moment is share a little bit more about the Flyway Youth Forum. So you can hear a little bit more about the context. First of all, we really appreciate all the applications that we received. We are delighted to see so much interest of youth across the Flyway interested in being part of the, uh, of this movement and of the, these different actions across the Flyway Youth Forum. The Flyway Youth Forum was designed with the objective to set the scene for coordinated youth engagement in wetland and migratory bird conservation across the Flyway for increased intergenerational communication and cooperation. The specific objectives of the Flyway Youth Forum are these four, four key objectives. The first one is networking. We really want this, this forum to be your platform to get to know each other, to learn more about youth, to be inspired by each other, because many of you are already doing a lot of uh, actions in wetland conservation or migratory water bird conservation or both. And some of you maybe are just starting to, to explore that path. And we want to provide this platform for you to exchange and learn from each other. The second objective is learning. We'll have different um, sessions, including one today on youth voices, where we'll be able to learn about current youth activities across the flyway, youth initiatives, youth-led projects that are really showing leadership in wetland conservation and migratory water bird conservation. Tomorrow, we're also excited to bring to you a series of presentations from partners across the flyway. So together we can see what's currently being done. What are the key issues that are the flyway, the East Atlantic flyway is facing? The third objective of this forum is collaboration. Through a series of workshops, we hope to bring everybody together to collaboratively think what are the priorities for youth for the flyway and what can we do about it? 
And, act, and objective four is, is that particular point. What can we do about it? What can we do together to improve the Flyway Youth Forum through different series of actions, through collaboration? And with that particular objective in mind, we have also designed a Flyway Youth Ambassador Program. The Flyway Youth Ambassador Program is composed of 12 forum youth that will lead the drafting of the forum declaration in the Flyway Youth Action Plan. They have been selected to be the spokespeople for the Flyway Youth across key forums beyond the forum. Many of you have applied for these positions and it was a hard choice to make, um, but we hope that you'll take the, the most out of the Flyway um, Youth Forum and we'll take the opportunity to discuss with the ambassadors also, what are your priorities and to help the ambassadors shape that um, action plan and declaration. We'll be presenting the Flyway Youth Ambassadors in the, in the next few days, uh, so make sure you keep an eye out for them. Second, the um, Flyway Youth Forum has been or also organized according to topics. We think that it's important to have a set of um, structured discussions around these different topics. And the topics were designed according to uh, a survey that was sent around to different partners and youth of the, of the Flyway. The topics that will be covered are migratory birds connecting generations, cultures, and communities. In that particular topic, the key question that we want to explore with you is, is there a common perspective around the importance of migratory birds and wetlands in our cultural history? And this, I, with this in mind, it'll be very interesting to see what are the cultural differences around migratory water birds and wetlands. The second topic we wish to explore is acting against wetland loss and degradation for future generations of both birds and people. And here, our question is, what is the role of youth in the conservation, protection, and restoration of flyway wetlands? And finally, our third topic is the flyway framework to strengthen local capacities. How can we increase opportunities to learn from and help each other along the flyway? So in the next few weeks of the Flyway Youth Forum, we encourage you to, to keep these questions in mind as you listen to participants, to different presentations, as you discuss different things together, as you connect and network uh, across, across the platform of the forum. And we'll have a particular discussion on day three, next Saturday, um, around a World Cafe with key speakers is specifically on these questions. So make sure you bring those thoughts, those reflections over to next Saturday in that particular session. Next, I would like to go over a few housekeeping rules. Given that this is a virtual meeting, the conditions are a bit different than if it was a, a, a meeting in person. However, we really want to make the most of this virtual experience. And so we have a, a few set of rules just to make sure that we can all have a very good time together. First of all, we really would appreciate if everybody um, will join on, on time. Um, the forum starts every day at 2 p.m. Um, we'll, uh, being on time will help us to make sure you don't miss anything and we'll um, be able to make the most of the forum. When you're not speaking, please make sure to keep your microphone on mute because it can be a little bit of an interruption when you hear other sounds. And if you have any questions, please raise your hand or write in the chat. And if you, in the discussion sessions, uh, you can definitely use your microphone. For interpretation purposes, if you have a headphone uh, set with a microphone that will also help Arnaud and Irene to make sure to, that they will hear you correctly. Finally, um, please note that all sessions of the forum will be recorded. Um, currently, this session is live streamed on YouTube, so you can also find it on the Wetland Link International YouTube page, and you can also share it with your network. 
If you do not wish to appear in the recordings, please make sure to keep your camera off. Finally, we also find it's important to have this, an important code of conduct, uh, just to make sure that we have uh, a wonderful time together and to really protect and promote the unique social virtual environment that we have here. So the forum will not allow any discrimination, sexual or emotional harassment, humiliation, prejudice, seg segregation, or any type of um, discrimination. Finally, um, as I mentioned, the forum is available in, uh, in English and in French. Um, the interpretation symbol looks like this one presented on the screen, and you can find it below on the Zoom um, tabs. Make sure that you select uh, a specific, the, the icon or the channel of your choice to hear the forum in French or in English. I'll just explain that part in French in case anybody has any issue finding that. Concernant l'interprétation, uh, nous sommes vraiment très heureux cette année de, de travailler avec uh, ICI de Paris qui nous permet au travers des heures volontaires de, de traduire, d'interpréter de, tout ce forum en français et en anglais. Um, nous vous invitons à sélectionner la langue de votre choix à travers l'icône d'interprétation qui est disponible dans la barre d'outils de, de, de Zoom en bas de l'écran. Next up, I'm very excited to present the program of the Flyway Youth Forum. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to send out the e-program yet, but it should follow very shortly after this, today's session. Um, but the Flyway Youth Forum, as you know, will extend over four days. Today is the launch. Our special, uh, we'll have a special opening ceremony, as well as a series of youth presentations and a discussion. Tomorrow on Sunday 19th, we will then have a series of presentations from our partners, as well as a panel discussion. And we'll have also a brainstorming activity to start thinking about those priorities. What are the priorities of youth for the Flyway? On Saturday the 25th, we will have the Flyway World Cafe to discuss those specific topics that I mentioned previously. And on, day, on the 26th of uh, September, on Sunday, we will then have a series of workshops to define what are the actions that we want to see for the Flyway Youth Forum and that we can lead as uh, youth across the, uh, the Flyway. Every day we'll have uh, some short virtual networking activities, um, which will all be a little bit different every day, just to give you the chance to get to know each other better. And now, specifically about today's agenda, we will have, first of all, an opening ceremony with some keynote speeches, which we're very excited to present to you. And then we'll start with an introductory presentation about the Flyway and youth engagement. We'll then have a, a virtual networking activity and then a short 15 minutes break. Following the break, we'll have some amazing youth to, to hear from, uh, from across the flyway and also from a different flyway. And we'll have a short discussion where you have a chance to ask any questions you want to the um, youth presenters. And finally, we'll wrap everything up by 5 p.m. CET. Now, I'm very excited to introduce to you our honor, honorable keynote speakers. First of all, it is a great pleasure and privilege to introduce the Secretary General of the Ramsar Convention on Wetlands, Martha Rojas Urego. Her commitment to the conservation and sustainable development, as well as social equity, are running themes throughout her career, from grassroots level to the highest level of international policy making. She has worked for the IUCN, for CARE International, as well as for the National Parks of Colombia. And she is now working as a Secretary General of the Ramsar Convention on Wetlands. And she sent us this keynote welcome from Glan in Switzerland.
I would like to congratulate Youth Engaged in Wetlands and Partners for hosting the East Atlantic Flyway Youth Forum. At a critical time to redouble efforts to protect migratory birds and the wetlands they inhabit, I am deeply encouraged by the tenacity and commitment of young people globally, leading the charge to conserve ecosystems on which we all depend. Healthy wetlands are critical to the survival of millions of birds, including 300 species that cross the East Atlantic Flyway every year. Traveling thousands of miles from the Arctic to Southern Africa, these birds stop at wetland sites for water, food and shelter along often perilous journeys. Due to a combination of wetlands loss, environmental degradation and increasingly climate change, the flyway for these birds is under severe threat. We have lost 35% of the world's wetlands since 1970, contributing to a decline of 81% of inland wetland species and 36% of coastal and marine species. And today, wetlands are disappearing three times faster than forests, putting a million species, including migratory birds, at risk. To protect these species, we have to conserve and restore wetlands ecosystems on which they and 40% of all global species depend. With their critical services for human and planetary health, there is an enormous opportunity and urgency to conserve and restore wetlands. As biodiversity hotspots with enormous capacity to store carbon and protect communities from climate impacts, wetlands are critical solutions to the connected biodiversity loss and climate crisis and achieving a sustainable and equitable future. They thus need to be a critical element of the post-2020 global biodiversity framework to be adopted at COP15 of the Convention on Biological Diversity and integrated into nationally determined contributions on the road to COP26 of the UN Climate Change Convention. It will take all of us working together to reverse the accelerating loss of wetlands and protect their benefits for people and nature. We need unprecedented action from all corners of society, governments, business, civil society and youth. I am truly inspired by the engagement from youth conservation networks so, such as the youth engaged in wetlands and others here today, setting the bar for stronger, coherent and inclusive action on wetlands and broader biodiversity loss. Your voices and actions are critical to raising awareness of the urgency and opportunities to scale nature-based solutions such as wetlands to the myriad global challenges we face. I am thrilled by the increasing diverse participation of young people in the designation of wetlands of international importance, in wetland management and restoration, in education and public awareness campaigns, and working to promote the wise use of wetlands for communities' income earning activities. We see a huge youth engagement in our global campaigns, both World Wetlands Day on 2nd of February and our ongoing 50th anniversary of the Convention on Wetlands, where youth have been a key partner to engage all actors to step up actions to protect wetlands. With the UN General Assembly's recent resolution proclaiming 2nd of February as World Wetlands Day, we have a huge opportunity to work together to drive even stronger awareness of wetlands values to people and nature. With the biggest stake in our planetary future, the voices of youth need to be heard to change hearts and minds and to drive political change and scale up investments in wetland conservation. I wish you a very successful forum and look forward to enhancing collaboration and engagement of youth and together turning the tide on wetlands and broader biodiversity loss for a sustainable future. Thank you very much, Connor, for, for sharing these very encouraging and inspiring words from Martha. Uh, it's truly uh, amazing to, to have this support for, for youth engagement uh, across the flyway and within the Ramsar Convention and seeing the momentum 
and the importance that youth voices, as Martha highlighted, um, for joining the discussion. Thank you very much, Martha, for these very inspiring and encouraging words, and especially for the amazing and critical work that the Ramsar Convention represents, especially right now in its 50th anniversary. Our key, our, our second keynote speaker took time out of his vacation to address this forum. We are privileged to hear from the Executive Secretary of the Agreement on the Conservation of African and Eurasian Migratory Water Birds, Dr. Jacques Trouvillier, who was strongly involved in the work in the development of several international environmental agreements, such as IWA, the Convention on Migratory Species, the Ramsar Convention on Wetlands, and the Convention on Biological Diversity. Let's hear from Jack. It's a great pleasure for me to have been invited to say a few words at the start of this first ever East Atlantic Flyway Youth Forum. My name is Jacques Trouvillier and I'm the Executive Secretary of the Agreement on the Conservation of African Eurasian Migratory Water Birds, called AEVA, an intergovernmental treaty dedicated to the conservation and sustainable use of migratory water birds across Africa and Eurasia. Some uh, 50 years ago, as a young boy, I was looking for birds in woodland and wetlands, and I was lucky enough to work on biodiversity conservation later on. As you are probably aware, wetlands are essential resting, feeding, and breeding grounds for millions of migratory birds. They depend on a network of wetlands in order to survive. In fact, it was this global recognition of the importance of wetlands for water birds, which led to the establishment of the Ramsar Convention on Wetlands in 1971. Although younger than Ramsar, AIVA was developed as a treaty to coordinate the conservation and management of migratory water birds along the entire African Eurasian flyway a geographic space covering a total of 119 countries, which stretched from the Arctic breeding grounds to the wintering grounds along the Atlantic coast of Europe and Africa. As Executive Secretary of AIVA, I'm therefore delighted to see that Ramsar, alongside AIVA and others, has stepped forward as one of the initial supporting organizers of this East Atlantic Flyway Youth Forum, a truly unique event which is connecting the youth with the global agendas to conserve both wetlands and water birds across the flyway. The ultimate goal of the forum is to connect, empower, and provide a unique platform for dialogue for future youth leaders which are focusing on wetlands and water bird conservation in many of the countries found along this specific flyway. It is my sincere hope that the Youth Flyway Forum concept will continue to be successful and continue to grow beyond the East Atlantic Flyway and evolve to bring together youth from across the entire African Eurasian Flyway in the coming years. Here, I would like to mention World Migratory Bird Day, which, by the way, is coming up again on 9th of October, and which is uh, one of the flagship global awareness raising campaigns being run by the Conservation on Migratory Species, the CMS, and AEVA, in close cooperation with the US-based NGO called Environment for the Earth Miracles. I think there is a great potential to possibly link the two events, and I would encourage you to consider holding future Flyway Youth Forums around one of these two annual peak days of World Migratory Bird Day in the coming years. Finally, I would like to conclude by thanking and congratulating the organizers of this first ever East Atlantic Flyway Youth Forum. In particular, the extremely talented team from the youth engaged in wetlands, together with the dedicated staff at the WWT in Slimbridge, the Common Wadden Sea Secretariat, and the International Wadden Sea School, who have all helped to put this forum together. 
Last but not least, I would also like to especially thank you, all the many dedicated youth participants who are joining the forum online in the next days for all parts of the East Atlantic Flyway. Thank you for your interest and dedication to wetland and water bird conservation. And thank you for coming together in a spirit of international cooperation, which is so important. You are the future generation who will be charged with carrying forward the work we have started under Ramsa and Aiva to make flyway conservation happen. Thanks a lot, merci beaucoup, and yes, all together we can. Another wonderful speech from Dr. Jacques Trouvillier. Uh, it's very inspiring to hear the, these words and, and this encouragement. It feels very empowering and, and to know that the, the efforts of the Flower Youth Forum and, and the conversations that will take place resonate across different um, different forums and across the, the Iowa and Ramsar. So I'd like to give a, a huge thanks to both Martha Rojas Urego and Dr. Jacques Trouvillier for their uh, very encouraging words and, and their um, inspiration for us in the next few days. Next, I would like to hand over to my fellow organizer, Dr. Christine Mays in the Common Water Sea Secretariat to tell you more about this forum. Thank you, Elise. Um, yeah, it's my pleasure to now take over and actually introduce to you the uh, various organizers of the former, or let's say the key organizers. We had a lot of support from other organizations. Um, so first of all, we have Elise, whom you have already met, um, who's kind of like working for Youth Engage in Wetlands, together with Nick Fabienne and with Gab Mea, who are also in the audience today. Um, and you will meet them throughout the program in case you have any questions about youth engaged in wetlands. Further, there's my, my colleague, Carla Walsh from the Wild Fall and Wetlands Trust. Um, and then there is me from Christine from the Common Sea Secretariat. Um, so we also had obviously financial support and that was mainly provided by um, Waterbird and Wetlands Trust as well as the Common Sea Secretariat. Um, but we obviously also have to mention that there were many people and organizations who provided in-kind support by helping to find the incredible speakers whom you will encounter throughout the program, um, who acted as moderators or will be acting as moderators and facilitators at the various sessions. Um, they provide technical support um, or they simply helped us spread the message through the various channels so that we truly can create a flyby youth forum where people are coming together from the far north and from the far south. Um, and finally, I obviously kind of like also want to uh, thank very much our interpreters. We were still on the uh, slide before, but Connor moved a little bit too quick for me. And um, so they will kind of like join us throughout the program um, and will help to kind of like ensure that the language barriers are not a barrier for our corporations. And then we had, um, yeah, we have to put a very special thank you out there to our incredible advisors, which really helped to shape the fine details of this forum. Um, and then the next few minutes, uh, we now want to use the opportunity to tell you a bit more about the organizing organizations so that you can already get a first idea about the work that we are actually doing along the flyway. Um, and as I already have the floor, I will start with the Common Water Sea Secretariat. So located at the North Sea coast of Denmark, Germany and the Netherlands, you find the Warden Sea, which is the largest unbroken and largely undisturbed uh, stretch of sand and mudflats in the world. And due to this very unique setting and this very unique uh, ecological circumstances, it was inscribed as a World Heritage Site in 2009. The Common Water Secretariat that I'm working for um, is coordinating the trilateral work of these three Warden Sea states. Um, and the aim is to really achieve a natural and sustainable ecosystem in which the natural processes can proceed in a largely undisturbed way. Um, and the one sea is important for the flyway because every year about 10 to 12 million water birds visit the one sea on their annual migration from the breeding routes in the Arctic to the wintering sites in Western and Southern Africa. 
And due to this direct link between the Warden Sea and other flyway areas, the UNESCO World Heritage Committee had crested to strengthen really the collaboration um, between the Warden Sea and other areas along the East Atlantic Flyway for the benefit of these migratory birds. And this had led to the launch of the Warden Sea Flyway Initiative in 2012 with a vision um, that migratory birds really kind of like find lasting refuge along the flyway. And the Warden Sea Flyway Initiative has two main pillars. One is the monitoring program where birds are counted all along the flyway. And the second one is a capacity building and management program. And both of these programs you will hear a little bit more about during the next days of the forum. Um, they were obviously both developed in very close collaboration with various international and national partners. Um, among one, one of those is the International One Sea School, who was also um, an organizer in this forum. And just to give you a bit of an idea, kind of like where are we going in the future? Um, I think, yeah, there we are. Um, so far, most of our activities have um, focused on the African Atlantic coastline. Um, but we now have kind of like in plan a new climate resilient flyway project with a variety of different partners. And the aim of this project is to really strengthen also the link between the wetland sites in West Africa um, and the breeding grounds in the Russian Arctic. And so the project will um, focus on various aspects of flyway conservation, which includes research, management, policies. Um, but at the same time, it's also about considering really what do the local communities who also rely on the same resources as the birds do, what do they need? Um, and obviously the flyway um, work is always kind of like a collaborative work. And so it's all about kind of like really connecting people from along the flyway. And this is kind of like also my message for you for this forum, that you really keep networking, get to know people, exchange ideas. Um, this is really what can bring the flyway work forward. And with this, I will hand over to my colleague, Connor. Thank you, Christina. Um, yeah, and network is the key word as well for migratory birds for people. Migratory birds for people, MBP, it's a network. It's staff and volunteers at wetland visitor centers or education centers. Now that could mean a huge reserve with a huge building and a huge car park and tours are every hour and classrooms. But it could also mean a wetland where there are some information boards that volunteers give occasional talks. It's all wetland education in one form or another. Now, some of these centers are run by independent nature lovers. Some are run by, by government nature agencies. So it's quite diverse. And, and there's big NGOs um, and charities in it, like WWT, where I work, um, Wetlands International, BirdLife International. And that map shows the member centers of the network, but that map is also a physical thing and here it is when we created it at an annual meeting a few years ago and it's a good symbol of a network as well because so many people bring different skills to a network and it makes something happen that individually you couldn't have done here we have people who came up with the idea for the map uh, people who designed the activities to use with it the graphics designer the people who funded it the people who advised on it uh, and that's how networks work it's actually differences actually that actually enable you to do something great. You can see the map in use there in Senegal at the top um, and in France below that. There's different ways of using it in different uh, places. And that's its flyway role. Current projects, this form is really important to us at MVP. Uh, we've yeah, put a lot of work into it and it relates to a lot of what we do. So we have a program, an optics sharing program called Optics for Africa, where we distribute binoculars uh, to uh, Wetlands International and other centers, center operators in West Africa. You can see Ibrahim there from Wetlands International Africa uh, with the very first batch that we gave him when he was here at Slimbridge. Uh, and we're doing similar or supporting similar projects uh, with the Wadden Sea and other partners uh, with bird guides um, and specially made fold out bird guides on this, the relevant species for different areas. So looking at What's next for us that you might be interested in? Well, we have an annual meeting coming up in a few weeks time and there, if there will be public sessions for that on the 11th of October. I'm happy to answer any questions about that. We're gonna stay involved with the Youth Flyway Forum if we possibly can. And also at WWT, we have other roles that are maybe outside MBP, but are in the same flyway and have other uh, and are relevant to it. So that is a whistle stop tour of MBP. I'm going to hand over now to Nick to talk about YEW.
sorry, actually, I think I'll give a quick presentation about Youth Engage in Wetlands. Um, so Youth Engage in Wetlands uh, was created in October 2018 during the, in parallel to the Ramsar COP13, the Ramsar Conference of the Parties in Dubai. During the conference, um, youth led uh, a, a smaller youth forum than we're having today, uh, but it included two main activities. First, a side event to share some stories, which were very preliminary at the start. We didn't know that there was that many young people doing youth in, that were doing work in wetland conservation and um, migratory water birds. So the idea of this first forum was really to share some stories about different youth across the world working in wetland conservation and also a workshop to define the vision of youth engaged in wetlands. The time where we built up to um, and this particular side event in, in the, during the Ramsar conference, what we noticed was really this need for a network. We needed a platform for young people to be able to meet and connect to each other, um, to talk about the experiences and to know that they weren't alone out there in their work. If you can come back just the previous slide. Thank you very much, Connor. Um, I am very excited to show you the Youth Engaging Wetlands team. The, the, the people that are driving this initiative from behind the scenes, all volunteers, and we've recently grown our team, so our pictures need to be updated. Um, but just a few weeks ago, and we are now 15 volunteers work, working around the world to achieve the objectives of Youth Engaging Wetlands that we defined until 2024. Our team is composed of young people passionate and, and driven for wetland conservation and working from a different background. Everybody has a very multidisciplinary background, but everybody's coming together with the same passion for wetlands. You can learn more about each one of us uh, on our website. So, bueno. The, um, Objectives of Youth Engaging Wetlands and our mission, uh, next slide please, were defined following the discussions during the Ramsar COP13. We virtual, ga virtual, virtually gathered to create this strategy and this scoping document for the period of 2019 to 2024. Our mission is to provide a global platform for young people to enable and empower them to help to protect wetlands and promote their conservation and wise use around the world. Our vision is that Youth Engage in Wetlands is identified as a leading youth network for wetlands and also that young people are recognized as key stakeholders in the Ramsar Convention and other platforms through meaningful engagement in different processes and to ensure intergenerational cooperation. Our strategy is based on four objectives. Our first one is the, involves the development and the management and the coordination of this international network. We are currently developing our membership plan, uh, but we are already collecting uh, emails of the people that would be interested in joining Youth Engage in Wetlands, and you can find that through our website. Our second objective is on knowledge and capacity building, which includes establishing a knowledge sharing platform to increase the understanding of the challenges and opportunities for, young, for youth engagement in the Ramsar Convention and wetland conservation in general. Our third objective aims to build the participation of youth in decision-making and intergenerational cooperation within the convention and beyond. In particular, Youth Engage in Wetlands has been very active and engaged within the Ramsar Convention decision-making um, bodies and different meetings. And last but not least, our fourth objective is on communication, outreach, and building networks with youth and their organizations in order and also to contribute to communicating youth stories and the importance of wetlands and also the mission of the Ramsar Convention in order to create greater ownership of this mission among young people. Last year, um, next slide please. Last year, we had the pleasure to work with the East Asian Australasian Flyway Partnership, designing the first ever Flyway Youth Forum. Designing this concept of the Flyway Youth Forum was a really exciting opportunity. And we know we, we had some 
uh, great discussions with the EAFP in developing this, this framework for, for, youth for youth engagement across a migratory um, flyway. The key messages that came out of this particular flyway youth forum was that it's, it's really important to have opportunities like this, like the Flyway Youth Forum, for like-minded youth to be able to meet and to create a community of young leaders for the Flyway. The participants called for increased collaboration with partners, as well as the development of more youth-friendly spaces for meaningful participation. There was a in very strong interest in replicating the Flyway Youth Forum, and we are absolutely delighted to be able to present this East uh, Atlantic Flyway Youth Forum together with WWT, uh, the Migratory Birds for People, the Common Wadden Sea Secretary and the International Wadden Sea School. It's absolutely a fantastic opportunity to replicate this experience. And following the words of Jacques Trouvillier, it, uh, you should keep your eyes out for another session soon um, in next year, probably. Um, on that note, I'll stop here and hand over to Connor so he can tell you a little bit more about the East Atlantic Flyway and its challenges. Thank you, Elise. Um, we're a little bit short for time, so I'm going to breeze through some of this. But some, why the East Atlantic Flyway and your knowledge and engagement in it is important is, I'm going to essentially say, because of some folk tales from Western Europe. This is a corn crake, the Krex Krex and it spends the summers up in Western Europe. Long ago, people didn't know when, they saw that it was there and then it wasn't there. So they thought, well, what happens? Well, it, it hibernates on the ground and it turns into cow dung, was something some people thought. That was what they thought. Swallows, similar thing, they were there and then they were gone and they were back again. Some people said, well, maybe they hibernate in ponds. They dive underwater into the mud to hibernate. Barnacle geese. Some people thought, well, we never see where they come from. They show up, but we never see them being born. So maybe they're not born from eggs. Maybe they're born from goose barnacles, and maybe they're actually flying fish. People saw the world around them, the natural environment change with the seasons, but they couldn't explain it. And now we can. We have, since 2006, there's this fantastic map that BirdLife distributes which divides the world into flyways. Lines on a map, a difficult topic to ever go through because there, there's lots of different species involved. Many different species, many different routes. Some will not go all the way from the Arctic to Southern Africa, but they're still on the same flyway. So just to show you another, oh, there's another, another map, which again shows the flyway in a different approach. And you'll recognize this as coming from one of our partners. Uh, and it's, it also helps us realize that there are gaps in our knowledge because the flyway is about both that, birds flying en masse, and it's also about our so the social aspect of the flyway, our identity, our folk and our traditional and our, the way we interact with the world around us, the way we understand what we see happening in nature around us. So obviously a lot of people understand that that's an important thing, an important way to work. The idea that you can link places up. We all know already, and we're going to know even better soon in this forum, that having something in common, a shared interest, makes it a lot easier to communicate across cultures and even across languages. Maybe you've been in a field holding binoculars and someone comes up to you as, oh, bird watching. We know that. And so a lot of organizations, excuse me, including those taking part today and those who've organized the previous youth forums, make use of that and it's a great thing for conservation so this map again what does it what does it indicate well i'm just going to leave you with a couple of numbers La, um, at bank d'organ in mauritania last year 1.7 million water birds were counted at migration time and there's at least three sites where there's more than a million migratory birds relying on them so there's our culture but there's also a huge amount of scientific data. And the flyaway is a way of combining these two aspects. So that's a very brief run through about why the flyaway is important. Next, we're going to look at youth engagement. So I'll hand over to Youth Engagement Wetlands again. 
Thank you very much, Connor. Um, yes, based on, on this important presentation by Connor of the importance of the Flyway Youth Forum, of the Flyway, sorry, of the East Atlantic Flyway, we also wanted to highlight why is it important to focus on youth engagement and, and uh, especially on wetlands and migratory water bird conservation? Next slide, please. Last year, uh, Youth Engaging Wetlands created a survey for young people around the world. And the objective was to build a greater understanding of the different challenges and opportunities that young people face within this field of wetland conservation and, um, and migratory water birds. We wanted to identify common strengths and challenges, and as well as communicate on the diversity of activities that young people are currently doing in wetland, in wetland conservation. We also wanted to look for what are the different tools and resources that can support young people and strengthen the Youth Engaging Wetlands Network. Next slide, please. In total, we received 88 individual responses from around the world, and especially from young people working across 31 different countries. You can see in the map here, the country of origin of the responses and the number of respondents. Next, please. Very briefly, to share a little bit what the outcome of this survey was, um, I'm just going to mute. Uh, there we go. Um, the, the outcome of this survey was to, or that, in fact, it was a very first survey of this kind. We don't think there is something that similar that exists currently that analyzes the role of young people within wetland conservation. So we, it was quite a learning opportunity and we had some limitations that the fact that it was self-reported that we did have a lack of representation across uh, different countries and regions and especially in uh, North America, Europe and Oceania. And we believe that access to internet and digital literacy might also mean that the survey was not the most accessible to some young people in some uh, more remote areas. However, what this report does show us is the baseline status of youth engagement and allows us to take to make some important conclusions in terms of the importance of raising youth voices around um, wetland conservation, as well as fomenting youth advocacy. We have also elaborated a set of recommendations that I'll share in the next slides. Next slide, please. thanks. So one of the conclusions, uh, the, the few conclusions that we have taken out of this study is that, oh, sorry, previous slide, Connor. Thanks. <laughs> Alone or in a group, young people around the world are already taking action for the conservation and wise use of wetlands. Youth as a period of life encompasses a really heterogeneous group uh, of individuals. This stage provides each and every one of us with different sets of challenges, depending on our local context. However, through our diversity, wetland youth are united by some common obstacles and a common sense of urgency and vision of a world where together wetlands and people thrive. In particular, the report also highlighted that youth are key allies for wetlands and can contribute constrictive, constructively to the world of wetland conservation if they are meaningfully involved in processes and decisions that ultimately affect their lives. And with that in mind, we've also developed some key recommendations. Next, please. Our recommendations are directed specifically towards wetland practitioners from policymakers at the level of the Ramsar Convention, research institutes, NGOs, wetland site managers, and funding agencies. We believe that it's important to support youth and youth-led initiatives for wetland conservation and wise use. And we particularly call on empowering women and non-binary people in these activities. We also ask that there are uh, opportunities are provided that are tailored and meaningful in, in order to build capacity building within youth in, youth in wetland conservation. We also recommend that mm, different tools for effective and sustainable fundraising is shared with young people and that we must ensure the safety and well-being of young people while they are working in the field of wetland conservation as it 
as we've learned through our survey, that is also can become quite a dangerous, um, a, da a dangerous work. Our second recommendation is to recognize youth as key stakeholders of the Ramsar Convention. In particular, to recognize young people are key in ensuring the health and protection of wetlands, and also to increase awareness among youth of the Ramsar Convention, what it is and its objectives, and what it is currently doing. We're really hopeful with, we're very uh, encouraged by the words of Martha at the beginning of the uh, of this um, first day of the Flyway Youth Forum, recognizing the important voices that young people provide. Finally, we believe that it's a very, we need to strengthen intergenerational co cooperation and decision uh, making. Youth needs to be involved in decisions that affects their lives and youth friendly spaces such, such as the Flyway Youth Forum for meaningful participation and inter intergenerational cooperation is really uh, an important way forward. Now, without um, further ado, I'd like to now introduce the next um, session of the Flyway Youth Forum, which is a virtual networking.